How's it going everybody? Andrew Robinson here, back at it with another Max MSP tutorial. In this video, we are going to talk about the key object. The key object is great because out of this left outlet, it will report the as key code of the key press. What is the as key code exactly? Well, that's a protocol of computers that basically assigns a specific integer value to the key of the keyboard that you press. And this is really great in Max because it lets us make things very interactive with the keyboard in a lot of different ways. What we're going to do today is create a musical typewriter. So first things first, we need a visual window to see what we're going to be typing. So I'm going to create jit.world and as always I do at floating one, at fsa one, at fs menu bar zero. And that will give us this nice world for us to see things in. We're going to press T on the keyboard and create a toggle. We're going to patch that in, lock the patch, click it, turn it on, and now our jit.world is rendering. Um, next, we're going to press I to create an integer box. And we're going to attach that left outlet into the integer box. I'm going to lock my patch and I'm going to hit a key. I hit A and we got 97. S is 115, D 100. So every key that we hit will have some value. Even your other keys like the up arrow key or the down arrow key, the enter key, the delete key, these all have very specific values. Um, and so we're going to use that. And to do the typing part, we're going to use jit.lcd uh, because it has the message uh, ASCII to let us type specific letters using it. I'm going to give the jit.lcd the attributes for char, 640, 480. This is pretty standard for using matrices. Uh, we have four planes. Uh, it's going to be a char data type, and then we're working with a dimension size of 640 by 480. If you've seen my jit.lcd tutorial, you know the next step. We have to initialize our lcd with a load mess clear object, so that way uh, when we open up this patch, the message clear is going to come out of this patch cord, clear our LCD, and it's going to be ready for us to draw things. Um, right now, I'm going to lock the patch, double click load mess, that sends the message through the patch cord, and uh, that's the same thing. So, as, so our LCD has now been cleared, and next it's going to need a bang to output its frames, which we can get from the middle outlet of the world object. I'm going to create a send. We're going to give it the name render. I'm going to copy this, change that S into an R for the receive, and that's going to be the, oh, not that object, into the LCD. And that is going to be the bang uh, that will output the frames of the LCD into our jit.world, uh, which we're going to do right now by creating a video plane object, which is going to be a floating video plane in our world. We're going to say at transform reset to, so it reaches the edge of the windows, patch the LCD right in there, and now we have this nice, beautiful, blank, white frame for us to do stuff on. So I said we're going to type the, the letter that we're typing using the ASCII message, so we're going to write ASCII uh, dollar sign, dollar sign one, uh, which is going to be our variable. So now whatever integer we pass into this will be the letter typed and we'll see that in the window. So I'm going to lock the patch again, start typing things, and you'll see it is working, but we're drawing those letters off the top of the window, which is not good. So we actually have to now specify where we want the pen to go in order to type that letter. And this will be important too, because uh, if we start typing off the edge, we're going to want to go to the next line. So we're going to create a move to object, which we know from the LCD tutorial as well, uh, is how we're going to move the pen around to a different location. And I'm going to say one for our X value. So we start right here at the edge and we're going to say dollar sign one for our Y value because that's what we need to move as we hit that edge. Um, now, we're going to use the counter object to move down the Y value. Counter, when it receives a bang, will just output the next integer value. It counts. It's going to go one, two, three, four. Um, we need to increase our Y value by the font size in order to get the correct spacing for the lines. So actually, it's going to be really important now to create another load mess object where we define that. So we're going to say font for the message. We're going to say our font style is going to be Arial, and we're going to give it a font size of 32. We're going to patch that into the jit.lcd, lock and double click the load mess object, and now we have been, we have specifically set our font size to be 
32. And that uh, is the value we're going to then use and multiply by the output of our counter. Because if we multiply 1 by 32, we're going to get a return of 32. And then 2, we're going to get 64. So it's just going to count the, the Y pixel values to be the correct size. If we wanted our font to be 80, then you would multiply by 80. It's just the same as the font size value. Pretty easy. We're going to do that. And then we're going to also add 32 at the end. So we get an offset of 32 pixels to start with on that first output. Um, and that will just make sure that our letter is going to draw right here in this corner rather than off the top of the edge like it is right now. And all we got to do is patch that into the object and it is all ready to go. We're going to create a load bank object to initialize it um, so that when we open up this patch, it's ready to go. And I'm going to lock, double click that right now and then start typing. And you'll see we are typing in the correct spot now for us to actually see it very easily. But we haven't done the next step that where it goes off the edge, we're going to go down to the next line. Uh, and to do that, we have to get the location of the pen, which we can do by sending the get lo pen location message to the JIT.LCD. And we're going to do this by taking our as key message here, and we're going to put a comma in there. So that's going to separate it out into two subsequent messages. First, we're going to send the, the key that we're typing, and then we are going to say get uh, pen lock and that will give us the pen location out of this dump out outlet I'm gonna attach that into a message box real fast type and you'll see we get the message pen locate or pen lock which stands for pen location and then an X and a Y value uh, so we're gonna take this message here we're gonna say route pen lock because we want to filter that out and what's going to come after the route is now going to be that X and Y value, which we're then going to unpack. And uh, we're going to take these two separate integer values. So we're going to say unpack II, and we're going to say uh, greater than or equal to 640, because this first value is going to be our X, and the size of our X dimension is 640 pixels. So we know if this value is going to be greater than or equal to 640, it's at that edge. So cool, pretty easy. We're going to do that. And then when that is true, when we actually are greater than 640, this is going to then output a one, which will turn into a bank using the cell one object. And now every time that's true, when this outputs that one, we're also going to get a bang out of this outlet, which we can then use to hit that counter and move to the next line. So I'm going to type something and you'll see it worked because it was already greater than 640. That bang went through and it went to the next line. And we are now there, and I'm going to keep typing. We're going to hit the edge again, and we are just counting down the line on and on forever uh, until we get to the bottom. Now, the issue is once we get to the bottom, the edge of the Y, we're going to start typing all the way down here, and we're not going to be able to see anything that we're typing because we're off at the side of the window. So we're going to have to reset it when we get to that point, which is actually going to be pretty easy. We're just going to copy what we've done here, but we're going to change this 640 to a 480 because that's our Y range. And so we'll know we'll, we're at the edge when we go past that or are equal to it. And then we're going to say cell 1, and we're going to then send that into a trigger object because we need to do a few things to hit to make the reset work. We're going to say 0, clear, in that order because we need to first clear the LCD. Uh, so we're going to patch that clear outlet into the LCD. That's going to happen. Then we're going to send this zero out to this inlet of the counter, the reset counter to number immediately, because we want that counter to reset immediately back to zero. Um, and with that, we're going to just keep typing. And now once we hit that bottom window uh the well hopefully that stuff won't happen ignore that <laughs> uh, i'm just going to keep typing and yeah once we hit the bottom edge of the window it's going to send the clear message out and send that zero out and it's going to reset everything back to the beginning uh, i shouldn't just be hitting random letters so quickly but there you go you see it just worked all right so now that we're back at the beginning 
we're ready to do the next step, which is make this musical. And like uh, we've been seeing, the key is outputting a very specific integer value. So there are a lot of different ways we can make this sound musical, but to show it really quickly, I'm just going to create a modulo object, which is going to wrap whatever integer value comes out of this outlet um, but to a range of 0 or 36 because the modulo gives us the remainder we're going to then add a 36 offset so the lowest value will be 0 or the lowest value will be 36 because 0 plus 36 is 36 and the largest value will be 72 because 36 plus 36 is 72 uh, and then uh, we're gonna make this a musical note by just saying make note and all you got to do is define the velocity and the duration um, which if you wanted to get fancy with, you could change uh, and really make this sound musical. Um, but to make it actually make the sound, we're just going to pass it to the note out. Just like that. Uh, pitch goes to the pitch inlet, and this pitch, this velocity outlet goes to the velocity inlet. And once that's done, once you start typing, you're going to get a note. And each note is specific to that letter. That's the sound of the H the sound of G, F, D, S, A. And it's not really set up like a keyboard. It's kind of very, it's specific to the note, but it's kind of random. With a little bit more uh, work, you could actually make this into a very musical keyboard if you wanted to, or you could just have fun with the random typing and see what, you know, see what things sound like. I can't type. Um, and the other issue is we can't delete things. Uh, there's no going back, unfortunately. So I wouldn't recommend, you know, using this as a word processor, but it is a musical typewriter. Uh, so with that, I'm going to end the lesson here. I hope you guys learned something new, saw the value of the key object and how we can use it to do a lot of fun things because that it's just an integer value. And you can make integers do whatever you want in Max MSP. Um, so that's it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you then.